me, if you will, in your Bible or on your devices to Acts 5. <clears throat> and this has been called one of the most difficult passages in all the Bible. And it is. I mean, and we don't shy away from difficult passages. You know that. We preach through God's Word and we deal with passages that are hard. And this passage is hard. So it would be like someone who came into our church and said they had sold a piece of property and they were going to give it all to the church, but they had held back some. And I was standing at the front and they laid it at my feet. And the Holy Spirit guided me and said, hey, but you held some back. And then they dropped dead right there. Now, would that get your attention? Yeah, it would get my attention. It is one of the most surprising and difficult events in the life of the early church. So let's dig in and see what God can teach us through this. We're going to go verse 1 through 6. Follow with me in your word. But a man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, and with his wife's Knowledge, key, with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? You, why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard it. And the young man rose up and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Okay. Wow. Very beginning, the name is important. Ananias. Ananias is from a Hebrew word, Hanan, with an ending on it. Hanan means compassionate or gracious. And the ending is to God. Look at this. I am gracious to God is his name, but he's going to cheat. I am gracious to you, Lord. That's what Ananias means. And with his wife, Sapphira, and what is going to happen? Ananias sold a piece of property. And you remember just in the verse before last week, Barnabas sold property and gave it to the apostles' feet, gave it all, and was commended for it. But Ananias, with his wife's knowledge, kept back. Now, this is an important word, <clears throat> kept back. When you look at that, it's like, oh, I just held back a little bit. No. In the, in the original Greek, this word means that you are stealing that you are pilfering, that you are embezzling something from God, or in this case, from God. You are essentially stealing from God. And God uses these same words when he, command, when he is commanding Israel to get off their high horses because he said, what you're doing in Zechariah, he said, you're stealing from me. You're stealing my ties. You're stealing and that's the exact word here in Greek. You're stealing, you are pilfering. I like that word. You're pilfering what has been given to God. And the reason that's also important, this exact same word is used in Joshua, which we are studying in our Sunday school, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. It's, it's almost miraculous. It's, we're studying Jericho next week. After the Battle of Jericho, there was a guy named Achan, A-C-H-A-N. You may remember that. And all of the, the proceeds of 
Jericho were to be dedicated to the Lord, dedicated to the Lord. So all the gold and silver and the possessions, the, the bounty of that city was to, dedicated to the Lord. But Achan kept back, exact same word, kept back gold and silver, didn't he? Buried it under his tent. Same word used for Achan. So both Achan and Ananias literally pilfered and embezzled and stole money that was dedicated to God. So what happened? Achan, he and his whole family were killed. Every one of them were killed. And Ananias, we're going to find out real quickly what happened to him. And Ananias only brings part, as you see, only brings part of the proceeds and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, the land was yours. You could do with it as you please. You didn't have to sell it. You could have kept it. And when you sold it, you could have kept all the money. It's your land. Or you could have given half to God, half to you. Who cares? It's your money. But when you come in here and lie to man, you are lying to God because you say you've given the whole price and you've kept back stolen or pilfered from God. And the other interesting comment on that is, why is it that you contrive this deed in your heart? Satan. Filled your heart. Why has Satan filled your heart? And that is what happened. And he fell down and died. He lied to the Holy Spirit. He lied to men. And then great fear came upon everyone. You think? If somebody were laying out here in the front, I think we'd all have some fear. And that is a fact. Because you see, what Ananias was trying to do is have it both ways. He wanted to have one foot in his faith on the Word of God and the God of creation and one foot on his own money. He wanted it both ways. Now, have you ever done this? I'm going to get personal here. Have you ever done this? Have you ever kept back money from God? I have. I'm not dead. This is not a ghost. I'm not dead. Many years ago when our kids were in high school, um, I made a very stupid investment. I've told you about my greed. I've told you about the, some, many of the sins in my life. And I made a very risky investment thinking if it worked, wow, I'd have everybody's college paid for. It didn't work. And I essentially lost pretty much most of the college savings. Brilliant. Brilliant, wasn't it? Right when they're in high school. Mm -hmm. Sin of pride, sin of greed. Okay, I got all sorts of sins. But during that period of time, during those years, we had four kids, okay? Mm -hmm. You have four kids, they're going to college and you blow most of the savings right before they go. I had to, I worked hard. I had to borrow a little bit. And what I did, my tithe, I just ignored part of it. I kept back part of my tithe. We would try to catch up. We would try to, to we tithe 10% of our income, but but we tried to catch up, but no, we never did. And so every month, eventually, I, we got through that period, and, and that's been the last time that I've held back. But I've done this very thing, and I did not drop dead. Thank you, Lord. I was forgiven for my sin of greed and pride and holding back 
from God what was dedicated to him. I pilfered and I stole from the Lord. But don't you see both Achan's and Ananias' sin occurred in a critical time in the development of God's revelation. Achan, they were just going into the promised land, right? This is the first city they conquered. And he could, that sin could have gone through the whole camp. But God destroyed that sin, destroyed that cluster of sin in that family, and everyone kept straight. This is the church, the new kingdom, going into the new promised land, the whole world. This is the very first church. And in the very first offering, someone is stealing. Someone is pilfering. And so the Holy Spirit that gives us power, the Holy Spirit that fills his church, this Holy Spirit also purifies. Because holy means you're pure, you're set apart. And the Holy Spirit purifies to cleanse that sin within the church. And we're going to get into that even more in a second. So we can't have it both ways. We can't have one foot standing on our faith in the Lord and one foot standing on my faith and my money and my possessions. Now, what happens to Sapphira? After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. He gave her a number. And she said, oh yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came, they found her dead. They carried her out and buried her beside her husband, and great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. Great fear. So we see almost an instant replay. We see that Sapphira comes in and Peter's just speaking the truth. He's not trying to trick her. She just comes in and she repeats the lie of her husband. The exact amount that he said he gave, she said that exact amount. And so Peter asked her husband, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? Just like with this evil, just the same words, Satan filled the heart of Judas to turn over Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Exactly the same quote. And why are you lying to the spirit for Ananias, but testing the spirit to Sapphira? And even through God's word in Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the spirit by whom we are sealed for the day of righteousness. Don't grieve the spirit. Lying, testing, and grieving the spirit. She was testing the spirit of the Lord. And it was required of her, her life. The whole church. Now, this is the very first time in Scripture in the New Testament, ecclesia is the Greek, the whole, that's the church. That's the first time church is used in Acts. So we are now seeing this brand new church. And the whole church was a, had a great fear. As you can imagine, bam, Ananias, bam, Sapphira, both struck down within three hours and carried out and buried. 
You can imagine the word and how that went, not just in the church. I mean, if that happened here, as soon as you got home, what would you do? Well, you wouldn't even be home. You'd be texting and driving probably. Bam, bam, bam. You know what happened in church today? Two people got killed because they withheld their money. Bam, bam, bam. It would, it, would, it would trend on Facebook. It would trend on YouTube. It would trend probably everywhere. There may even be film crews here. What is going on in this church? People are dropping for withholding money from the Lord. Actually, maybe nobody would come here. They'd be bailing. I'm not going to that place. I can go to another church and do what I want. But the whole community of believers had a great fear. And that's why. And why is that great fear? Because we are... The temple, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are personally the temple of God. And we are to be holy because God is holy. And we are indwelled by this spirit. And 1 Corinthians lays this out so beautifully in 3.16, just like John 3.16, 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. When we sin, God takes sin a lot more seriously than we do. We are his temple. We're to be holy. This is his body of Christ. We are to be holy. And the examples of Achan and then Ananias and Sapphira are unique. The only ones in Scripture like that, that powerfully demonstrate that God's temple is holy and that his church is holy. And those who violate it, who lie and test and steal and pilfer, they had a consequence that was unique. This brand new church, this brand new body of Christ, the first one, the first church in the world after the risen Lord had come, had been filled with the Spirit. We saw that, tongues of fire, everyone was filled with the Spirit. They had unity. They had great miracles. They were performing deeds through the power of the Spirit. And this Spirit wants them to be holy. And when those folks died, this fear spread throughout that, that church. But fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, we're told in Proverbs. Fear of the Lord is what we're to have. When I come before the Holy Lord, you better believe I'm going to be shaking. Yes, in fear, even though I'm saved, thank you, Lord, and I'm going to be face down, lying flat on my face, flat on my face, my whole body face down, just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I can barely say when I'm in his presence. And you know we all will shake. I mean, it's, it's an awesome thing. And that all, word awe also means fear. Fear, awe, and reverence are the words that that same word means. We cannot have one foot standing upon our faith in the Creator God and one foot standing on our pride and our possessions. We are God's temple. This church is God's body. And he wants us to be holy and not to lie and not to steal and not to cheat. There's a question that you may have never thought of, and that is this. Where did Ananias and Sapphira go when they died? Yeah, they were taken out and buried. Did they go to heaven or did they go to hell? Did you ever think about that? We hear about this story, but do you ever think about what happened to them in eternity? Well, I did, and I do. Because this is part of this great question and this great example, and it helps us to understand it. We have another similar circumstance Paul is writing about in 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> we studied that we in our Corinthians Bible study a couple of years ago at night, our Tuesday night Bible study. 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, Deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, 
so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Remember that? Deliver this man so that his flesh can be destroyed. The man was living in an incestuous relationship with his um, stepmother. He had to be expelled from the the church. And he said, deliver him to Satan and let him destroy his flesh in order to save his soul. And we know that Achan repented in Joshua 7, 20. Truly, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. We hear the same words when David was confronted of his sin of murder and adultery. And he, when Nathan came before him and, and God convicted him in, in 2 Samuel 12, 13, I have sinned against the Lord. And we know what happened to David. He was not killed. He was exalted. And through his seed, his descendant came Jesus. David repented from a sin, a horrible sin, a murder. Achan repented, yet he died physically. And we don't know what Ananias and Sapphira did. It's not in Scripture. And so what I'm going to say right now is my opinion. I want you to understand that is different. This is not in Scripture. The Scripture doesn't say a word about their repentance. So when you're confronted with a something you did really, really wrong, what do you do? Do you, um, I mean, when, you, you, when you've been confronted, your heart pounds, your blood pressure goes up, absolutely, yes, you can have a heart attack and die. And, and this literally may have been what happened. These people were just frightened to death, literally. And they may have, hopefully, they may have said a word that's not written. They may have repented in their mind because they didn't have but a, a minute or two, and they're gone. But if these two things occurred, if, number one, if they were believers in Jesus, and it looks like they were, they were in the early church, they were the first, in the first members of the first church, they may, and theoretically, had a personal relationship in Christ and were filled with the Holy Spirit. If that's true, and in the last second of their life, they say, oh, Lord, forgive me, bam. What do you think would happen? Well, God's word is very clear. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and that's why I'm alive, I have done the same sin as these two people. I've done it. And I'll look around and I would suggest that I'm not the only one that's done it. I've done this sin. But I am a believer in Jesus Christ. He has saved my soul. I've been washed by his blood. I've been filled with his spirit. And he convicts me. And I repent. And when I repent, I am restored. And I am given the righteousness of God because Jesus took my sin to the cross so that I could have the righteousness of God. And that's what I have. And that's why I'm alive. Otherwise, I am dead in my sins. So I would suggest to you, if those two things were true, and we have no evidence in Scripture, but if they were true, then Ananias and Sapphira, God, don't you see, destroyed the flesh to save the soul? And they are saved if they believed and if they repented. That is what I think happened. As I close, we have an example of a very wealthy um, gentleman that I knew many, many years ago in a church uh, before this, who was near the end of his life, and he had millions, I mean millions, and he was deciding, should I give these millions and have a big 
building named after me on a college campus there over in Blacksburg and have my name chiseled in whatever stone they use? Or should I give this, these millions to church and to ministry? Long story short, he gave it to Virginia Tech, and there's a big building with his name on it and stone, and, um, and that's his choice. I don't know this man very well, didn't. He's long, long, many years ago passed away. I pray that he is a believer, just those two things that I told you about Ananias and Sapphira, that he has a personal relationship with Lord. He was convicted of his sin and he was forgiven of his sin and he was restored to that right relationship. And I pray that's what happened to him. But you see, he wanted a legacy. And I love the song that we sing, you, you know, that uh, I don't um, care if you remember me, uh, you know, the, the chorus, I don't want to leave a legacy only, only what? Jesus. I don't care if you remember me. I don't care if there's a stone out there that says Stockburger. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't want that. I don't care if you remember me. I don't want to leave a legacy. Only Jesus. And that's what we all, I pray, will do. Because we cannot live with one foot on the Word of God and trusting God and one foot trusting my pride and my possessions. Our feet need to be firmly planted on one thing. And that is the power and the presence of our holy creator, God, through his son, Jesus Christ. That's where we stand on the rock. We are his church, his temple, and we are to be holy. And the same spirit that gives us power and unity also convicts us of our sin to make us pure and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So today, I pray that we will all stand with both feet on the rock of our Creator, that we will confess our sins and be forgiven and claim our forgiveness and righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. May we stand firm. Pray with me.